Are you looking to transition your career into tech? Well, in this video, I'm going to ask some of the most common questions people ask me as a tech career strategist, specifically as it pertains to transferring careers into tech and some of the psychology and things to think about along the way to transfer your career into tech. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with approximately 25 years experience. Prior to being an enterprise architect, I'm a nurse practitioner that practiced internal medicine. And in today's video, we're going to talk about a lot of the psychology that goes around career change. And from my internal medicine background, I always found tech psychology fascinating. And I'd like to talk about the psychology behind the career change and how that can actually help you get to your goals based upon these questions that I get all the time from people that are changing careers. So the first question we're going to ask, and these are the questions we're going to cover in today's videos is it feels like there's so much to learn. How do I stay motivated to get to the end where I'm ultimately hired? Then the next question that we're going to talk about is about overcoming the fear of change because fear of change is something that's obviously not so easy for anyone. And then we're going to talk about imposter syndrome and getting over imposter syndrome. And these are very common psychological issues around career change. So that first question of there's just so much to learn. How do I stay motivated into the end? Now, the secret to staying motivated is going to be a couple of things. The first one is to know your why. Why do you want this new career? And you have to make it very clear. You have to paint the picture. It's almost like your vision and your mission statement. Why am I doing this? What's in it for me? Why do I want this so badly? Because when you have a strong why, there are things that you can achieve that's actually incredible. So I want you to figure out why you want this. And I want you to remember every day and how critical this thing is to you. Because that's going to give you some clarity and direction. I want to do this for this reason because it's going to help me this way. That's going to increase your motivation and your resilience. It's going to help you uh, really go and drive some success. Because each day, I have to get here. I have to get here. I have to get here. I need this more than anything else. That's going to keep you going. And that's going to build your decision making. So what do you really need to do? Not only do you need to know why, what you need to do is build yourself a plan. You need to obviously look at that destination and obviously look at your starting point and figure out what you need to learn in the steps along the way. Now, it's been said if you were going to eat an elephant, which I would never do, I love elephants, you would do it one bite at a time. Now, that's the same thing on your list. What I want you to do is build your list, uh, set your goals and specific, measurable, achievable, and re results-oriented and time-based goals, and make sure you learn one. As soon as you hit one goal, I want you to have a very quick celebration. You have your win. You already got there. And then maybe the next gig, start going to the next goal. And understand along the way that it is going to get hard because everything great is hard work. But no, you can get there as long as you know why, as long as it's in your heart, as long as it's in your mind, and as long as it's part of the love of the things you want to do, you will be there. So go develop your why. Go build your plan and execute on the plan. Now, I said you should make your goals smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, results-oriented, and time-based. What do I mean by that? I will become a CCIE by May 27th, 2026. I don't know. And what are you doing there? You're setting so go. It's the CCI exam you're giving, which is very specific, and you're giving a date and what you're going to do. That could be anything. I will master IP networking by uh, July 27th, 2025. I don't care what it is, but I want you to do that for every skill that you need to learn to go from your starting point to your end destination and that will get you to your goals. Now, the next thing that I need to talk about is overcoming the fear of change. This terrifies people. I'm not really happy where I'm at, but I've gotten comfortable with this, and at least I know what to do, and this new thing is terrifying. So what I want you to do is reframe this, and I want you to think of it is instead of thinking about the fear of the change, you need to shift your mindset to look at the opportunity that you actually have. Instead of thinking about what you have to lose, 
Focus instead on what you actually have to gain. Reframe your negative thought into a positive thought. That's kind of the basis of cognitive behavior therapy anyway, where we realize we tend to make uh, some thinking errors as regular people and we direct a negative thought into a positive thought. If you wanna go do something, go do it. You know, take your mindset, realize that change is actually an opportunity. That obstacle is an opportunity. And the bigger the obstacle, the bigger the opportunity generally is because most people won't actually really fight to achieve, fight to break through a big obstacle. So the next thing that I want you to do when it comes to change is to break it down into something meaningful. So if I was going to run a marathon, you know, you could think of you the, the entire distance that you have to run, but you might want to break it down into manageable steps. Maybe every eight or eight minutes or seven minutes, when you run a mile, it's like, oh, I ran my mile. And then your next goal is your next mile. And the next goal is the next mile because you can always go for another five minutes. I can keep this up for five more minutes. And five minutes later, I can keep this up for another five minutes. So break it into small, manageable steps. And that way you've got some wins along the way. Each win is fairly low risk. And the more track record you have of winning and success, the more you get used to be successful and desire to be successful. Now, for me, and I actually like to meditate and visualize where I'm actually going to be in the future. Now, admittedly, I'm a yoga practitioner for about almost 20 years now. Prior to that, I was a martial artist for most of my life. So being able to get in my mind, close my eyes, and actually see it in my mind's eye where I want to go, and all the steps that I'll have to achieve to get to those goals helps me quite a lot. Now, this is uh, so kind of a fluffy as it sounds. I've worked with a lot of people along the time and we can get the mind right. We can shift someone from someone that struggled to someone that's highly successful. It's everything starts here and then everything else is carried out by your thoughts. So get past the fear of change. Instead of thinking about change, think about the opportunity. Think about all the steps that you can do. And personally, I always like to build a contingency plan. Okay, if this thing didn't work out for some reason, I could still go back to what I had anyway and where I've been successful, so so what? And that kind of reduces the fear. But focus on the opportunity, focus on your why, focus on what, may, what made you want to make this change in the first place, and it will help conquer your fear. Now, the next one is how to get over imposter syndrome. And we have to be careful here and talk about is it imposter syndrome or is it something different? So imposter syndrome, realistically speaking, is when you're in a role or in a position, true imposter syndrome, and you are a leading expert in the world, and for some reason, you lack confidence. So, for example, the cardiothoracic surgeon that's had 30 years experience wakes up one day and they feel uncomfortable about doing their job. That is true imposter syndrome. So... Often when we change careers and I was a victim of imposter syndrome myself, and I'll tell you what I did about it. And I've cut thousands through it over the years. When I first took my first tech job, leaving healthcare for tech, and I, I got my first network engineer job as a senior engineer, I was terrified. And I remember telling my wife, I said, how am I going to survive in the senior engineering role? I don't know how I got it. I have absolutely no experience. What am I going to do? I don't even know what I don't know. I told my wife. And uh, what I then did is I, for the most part, built a plan to pass the Cisco Certified Internet Expert and every day read 500 to 1,000 pages a day. And I'll tell you, within about two or three weeks, I, my imposter syndrome was going down. Now, ultimately, when I started that job where I thought I wasn't going to know anything and I was worried about it, within a few weeks, I had already been coaching others and teaching others. Apparently, I had a lot more competency that I knew from the training that I actually had because I went way above and beyond in my training and my imposter syndrome was gone. And in my case, and I will tell you, in 90% of the cases, what people, what people, when they don't feel like they're competent enough to do the job, they get imposter syndrome. And that is not imposter syndrome. That is our bodies telling us to learn more. And if we work hard in the beginning of our career and every day we work to get a little better, you'll see that will go away very quickly. Now, when it's true imposter syndrome, where you're dealing with someone that's an expert in the field and they're a recognized expert and they're at the top of their game and they are concerned, now that's an issue that's a real psychological issue. That person's going to go need to see a psychologist because there's going to be some underlying issues that are going to need to be addressed. But normally speaking, when people are changing careers, that imposter syndrome they face is not true imposter syndrome. It's actually just fear of the unknown and fear of not having enough or knowing enough. And the solution to that is just learning more. 
So in this video, we talked about the following things. We talked about the psychology of career change. We talked about how to stay motivated when there's so much to learn. We talked about overcoming the fear of change. And we also talked about overcoming imposter syndrome. Now, if you're looking to get your first cloud architect job, network architect job, AI architect job, enterprise architect job, security architect job, join me in a free architecture webinar. We hold one of these webinars once per week. We'll talk about the skills that you need for these roles. We'll talk about what we do in these roles. We'll talk about how to get hired when you lack experience, even how to bypass HR so you don't get auto rejected for these jobs. These webinars are live, they're free. They're on Zoom, so you can sign up for the webinar in the description of this video. Uh, on these webinars, not only we discover the roles, we'll answer any kind of cloud architect, security architect, AI architect, network architect, security architect, career questions you may have. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Take care.